The Battle of RZHEV in the summer of 1942 was a part of a series of battles that lasted 15 months in the center of the Eastern Front. It is known in Soviet history of World War II as the first RZHEV Sikiyuka offensive operation, which was defined as spanning from 30 July to 23 August 1942. However, it is widely documented that the fighting continued undiminished into September and did not finally cease until the beginning of October 1942. RZHEV lies 140 miles west of Moscow and was captured by the German Wehrmacht in Operation Typhoon in the autumn of 1941, which took them to the gates of Moscow. When the Soviet counter-offensive drove them back, RZHEV became a cornerstone of the Germans' defense. By the summer of 1942, the city stood at the apogee of a salient that protruded from the front lines pointing in the general direction of Moscow. In July and August 1942, Stalin tasked two of his front commanders, General Georgi Zhukov and General Ivan Konev, to conduct an offensive to recapture RZHEV and strike a blow against Army Group Center that would push them away from Moscow. The attack would fall upon one of their main opponents of the winter battles, General Walter Model's 9th Army, which occupied the majority of the RZHEV salient. The two-month struggle left a lasting impression on the Soviet soldiers who took part. The Red Army suffered massive casualties for little gain during the fighting, earning the battle the sobriquet RZHEV meat grinder. Nevertheless, by October, the strategic balance in the center of the Eastern Front remained essentially unchanged. The German army had suffered grievous losses, and whilst their defense had been tactically successful, they had achieved little more than maintaining the status quo. Although the offensive failed, Dukov was given another chance to crush the RZHEV salient soon afterwards. Background the closing stages of the Battle of Moscow saw the formation of the RZHEV salient. The Soviet counter-offensive had driven a Wehrmacht from the outskirts of Moscow back more than 100 miles, and had penetrated Army Group Center's front in numerous places. RZHEV, a strategic crossroads and vital rail junction straddling the Volga, became the northern corner post of Army Group Center's left wing. It was the only town of note for many miles and gave the 9th Army something to hang on to. In what otherwise seemed a wilderness of forest and swamp in all directions, the salient's existence was threatened at the very moment of its creation, when the Kalinan Front's 39th and 29th armies opened a gap just west of RZHEV and thrust southwards into the German rear, just managing to keep the encroaching Soviet armies away from the vital rail link into RZHEV. The 9th Army, now commanded by General Model, managed to close the RZHEV gap, thereby cutting the Soviet supply line and reducing their ability to deal a crippling blow to the whole army group. The Soviet counter-attack had run out of steam and the Germans recovered enough to mount several operations to clear up their rear area. In July 1942, Operation Seidlitz was mounted to trap and destroy the two Soviet armies and succeeded in little over a week in doing so, making the army group once more an almost credible threat to Moscow. Prelude, Commanders von Wirtinghoff, Konev, Model, Dukov, General of Panzer Troops Heinrich von Wirtinghoff was senior corps commander in the 9th Army in June 1942, and temporarily led the army at the start of the summer battle whilst Model was on convalescent leave. He later commanded 10th Army and Army Group C in Italy. General of Panzer Troops Walter Model had commanded 3rd Panzer Division at the start of Operation Barbarossa, and had become commander of XXXXI Motorized Corps in October 1941. He had shown great resolve in the defense of winter battles, and was promoted to 9th Army Commander on 12 January 1942. He proved to be a tough soldier and a defensive specialist. 
Respected by Hitler, his star continued to rise, becoming a field marshal in March 1944. Georgi Zhukov was chief of the general staff when the Germans invaded the Soviet Union but, following a disagreement with Stalin concerning the defense of Kiev, was demoted to command of the Reserve Front. He became a troubleshooter, commanding the Leningrad Front in the autumn, and back to Moscow to conduct its defense and counter-offensive. Dukov remained in the central sector, and he argued in the spring of 1942 that the Moscow Axis was the most critical and that Army Group Sent opposed the greatest threat to the Soviet Union. To him, the German forces at RZHEV represented a dagger pointed at Moscow. Dukov convinced Stalin to give him the extra forces he needed. He commanded Western Front's attacks until, in the latter part of August, Dukov became deputy supreme commander and was transferred to Stalingrad. Later, he continued to hold the highest commands in the Soviet Army, and became a Marshal of the Soviet Union in January 1943. Dukov remained always in the thick of the fighting until the very end of the war, commanding the first Belorussian front in the assault on Berlin. Still in rivalry with Konev, who commanded the first Ukrainian front in the final battle, Colonel General Ivan Konev began the war against Germany commanding the 19th Army, which become encircled around Vitesk in the first weeks of the conflict. Stalin blamed Konev for the disaster but Dukov intervened and ensured his survival and promotion to front commander. He went on to command Kalin and front in the winter battles around Moscow with distinction, and still commanded Kalin and front at the start of the RZHEV operation. When Dukov was promoted to deputy supreme commander, Konev was given overall responsibility for the continuing offensive battlefield in the summer months. The climate in the RZHEV area was warm, with long days and a high sun which allowed the area to dry out after the spring thaw. RZHEV had flat, rolling country, with thick forests and patches of swamp. The neighborhood of RZHEV had open farmed land with a dense network of small village communities, which were often ribbons of houses along the roadside. The roads were mostly mud tracks that became almost impassable in the spring and autumn rains, but normally dried out in summer. Rainfall was typically moderate but the summer months of 1942 had seen unusually heavy and persistent rainfall. Of the Red Army's objectives, the city of RZHEV was by far the largest, with over 50,000 inhabitants. Zoutsov had under 5,000, Pogo Reloy Gorodishcha had but 2,500. Karmanovo, to be the scene of much bitter fighting, was in reality simply a large village. The Volga is the longest river in Europe, and in both the central sector of the Eastern Front at RZHEV and at the southern sector at Stalingrad, German and Soviet armies struggled for mastery of its banks. Both RZHEV and Zoutsov straddled the river, which was 130 meters wide at this point. Of major significance to both attacker and defender were tributaries of the Volga, the DRZHA, GZHAT, Oshuga, and Vazoza rivers, which ran south to north across the line of the Soviet attack. By August they constituted a major impediment to Dukov's Western Front's attack. His forces would have to cross the DRZHA on the start line and then a further one or even two flooded rivers to reach their final objectives. From the German point of view, the most important objective was the Vyazma RZHEV rail line, the loss of which would sever their supply line to RZHEV and render the defense of the whole salient untenable. Also important from the Soviet perspective was the Zubdov Shakovskaya rail line, which ran in the direction of their intended advance and could be used to ferry supplies forward. Opposing forces German order of battle the strength of 9th Army varied considerably during the summer months, as the army group shifted forces between its armies for use in different operations and defensive commitments. In early July the 9th Army was reinforced so that it could conduct Operation Sadlitz. 
It reached a total of 22 divisions, including four panzer divisions organized in five higher corps headquarters. After the successful conclusion of the operation the Army Group shifted many of its offensive-capable divisions southward for its next planned attack against the Sukhumchi Bulge, leaving the 9th Army at the end of July with 16 infantry divisions, organized in three corps, with 14 divisions in the line, one in reserve and another in transit. Nearly all the divisions of Army Group Center had seen heavy winter fighting, which had sapped away their fighting strength. According to rehabilitation reports, the necessity to hold the line, and the unabated intensity of defensive fighting, meant that Army Group Center's divisions could only be partially restored to strength. They would have limited mobility and reduced combat efficiency, with the greatest gap being the shortage of motor vehicles and horses. Following the collapse of its front east of RZHEV, the army was rapidly reinforced. But the continual strain of persistent Russian attacks led General Model to demand further support. By the end of September, the army commanded 25 divisions, half the army group's strength, including 20 infantry and 4 panzer, as well as the Großdeutschland division. Soviet order of battle Stalin and his command group, the Stauka, sought to develop strong concentrations of forces which would attack across narrow sectors with heavy assistance from supporting arms. For example, Kalinin Front was told to create a shock group of no less than 11 rifle divisions and three rifle brigades, eight tank brigades and 10 RGK artillery regiments. To achieve these high force concentrations, the Stauka handed over from its reserve to K Front, five rifle divisions, six tank brigades, two RGK artillery regiments of 152mm guns, four anti-tank artillery regiments, and 10 M30 battalions. Support for the operation was to be on a huge scale. In an attempt to wrest air superiority from the Germans, Colonel General Alexander Novikov, commander of the Soviet Air Forces, was told to concentrate 1,100 aircraft in the attack sectors, including 600 fighters. They sought to smash through the German front by implementing the idea of artillery attack to maximize firepower using mass collections of guns, mortars and rocket launches. 30th Army, for example, concentrated 1323 guns and mortars along its 6.2 mile stretch, achieving a density of 140 tubes per kilometer. The correlation of infantry in the attack sectors was calculated as between 3-4 to 1 in the 30th, 31st, and 33rd Army sectors and about 7 to 1 in 20th and 5th Army sectors. Artillery advantage was overwhelming with 6 minus 7 to 1 in all armies except in the 30th where it was calculated at 2 to 1. The majority of the Soviet tank strength still lay in separate tank brigades that directly supported the infantry. 30th Army started the offensive with 9 tank brigades with 390 tanks. 31st Army had 6 tank brigades with 274 tanks and 20th Army had five tank brigades and 255 tanks. Behind these army-level forces were newly created tank corps, the 6th and 8th to the rear of 20th Army, and 5th tank corps behind 33rd Army. The tank corps had been created between March and May around a kernel of existing tank brigades and new men from the training establishments. They were supplied with the best tanks available, but lacked artillery and support units. Initially, even trucks were in short supply. Although formed around a corps of veterans from the winter fighting, these units had supported the infantry armies and were not yet used to independent action, and were not able to fulfill their exploitation role. Their leaders were experienced commanders many of whom were cautious of German armored units from the previous years campaigning and tended to overestimate German strength. 